From seemingly light-hearted super flicks packing quite a morbid punch, to a picture about an animated bird leaving your soul feeling destroyed at times, here are those apparently quite innocent movies that possess a number of rather grim events. So I'm Gareth, this is What Culture, and here are 9 deceptively innocent movies with incredibly dark moments. Number 9, Stand By Me. Stand By Me is consistently acclaimed as one of cinema's finest coming-of-age tales. An innocent story on paper if ever there was one. That said, it's hard to escape the fact that large swathes of Rob Reiner's ultimately uplifting picture are as dark as Satan's armpit. Despite the youthful nature of the movie's 12-year-old protagonists, Stand By Me's central theme is arguably death. Considering the film's core premise concerns the hunt for a corpse, the movie's central quartet set off in search of the body of Ray Brower, a young boy who had recently gone missing. However, it's the kids' backstories that constitute Stand By Me's most unsettling aspects, serving as case studies in multiple forms of child abuse. A grieving Gordy is ignored by his parents following the death of his elder brother, Denny, while Teddy's mentally ill father is revealed to have attempted to burn his son's ear off. However, Chris this is arguably the film's most tragic example. In addition to having to deal with his loathsome elder brother and his psychotic friends, River Phoenix's charge was also framed by a teacher for stealing money at school. More heartbreaking still is the revelation of how an adult Chris met his end, stabbed to death in a diner whilst attempting to break up a fight. Pretty tragic. Number 8, Thor Ragnarok. While it may not fit the textbook definition of quote unquote innocent, Thor Ragnarok is one of Marvel's more light-hearted entries. The third Thor-centric installment is renowned for its consistent comic relief and colourful tone, with director Taika Waititi injecting his infectious sense of humour and wit into proceedings from the very get-go. However, it's worth noting that without the unrelenting comedy on display, Thor Ragnarok features so many dark moments that it would be a frontrunner for the MCU's most depressing film. Thor loses his father, Odin, in the early goings, before the majority of the Asgardians, including the Warriors 3, are brutal dispatched by Kate Blanchett's Hela in a rather bloody purge, with the remaining Asgardians forced into hiding to avoid intergalactic genocide. Yep, a colourful Marvel movie. There isn't even a happy ending to fall back on. The prophecy of Ragnarok ultimately comes true, destroying Thor's home and turning the entire Asgardian population into refugees. Almost unbelievably, it somehow gets even worse from there. With Thor attempting to guide his people to Earth for a new beginning, any sense of hope technically doesn't even last past the post credit scene, with their vessel being intercepted by a large spacecraft. 2018's Infinity War reveals that said spacecraft belongs to Thanos, who massacres most of the remaining survivors. Even Korg's hilarity ultimately can't distract from the morbid material born in the purportedly comedic Ragnarok. Number 7, The Karate Kid. 1984's wildly successful martial arts drama The Karate Kid served as a springboard for multiple sequels and even a Netflix series. However, for what is purportedly a feel-good coming-of-age tale, John G. Avildsen's original production happens to feature a jaw-dropping amount of bleak material. In the first instance, chief antagonist Sensei Kreese is clearly dealing with a significant amount of PTSD from his service in the US Special Forces during the Vietnam War. This spillover of unexpected Expressed psychological trauma is directed towards his students, teaching them a form of karate that emphasizes violence and aggression rather than the peaceful tenets upon which the martial art was originally built. However, matters get even darker from there when Mr. Miyagi's desolating backstory is duly revealed after he eventually opens up to Ralph Macchio's Daniel LaRusso, an Okinawan immigrant and 442nd Infantry Regiment veteran of World War II. The Medal of Honor recipient heartbreakingly confides in his new pupil that he lost his wife and unborn child in an internment camp during his military service. While the Karate Kid is primarily associated with the notion of conquering bullies and no-can-defense crane kicks, it's hard to shake some of the darker elements associated with this classic picture. Number 6, The Incredibles Acclaimed as one of the greatest superhero films of all time, trailers for 2004's The Incredibles hinted at little more than an animated action offering that was typical fare for a children's film. As such, the amount of disquieting elements that came crashing out of Brad Bird's effort almost defied belief. 
For starters, the movie is barely five minutes in, before viewers have been treated to the sight of an attempted suicide. The aftermath of said suicide attempt swiftly morphs into a storyline featuring collateral damage lawsuits, the depressing effects of a monotonous civilian existence, and a midlife crisis storyline that stops just short of full-on infidelity from a purported family man. Bird wasn't done cramming morbid material into this seemingly innocent narrative vehicle either. The once wide-eyed superhero fan Buddy is eventually unmatched as Syndrome. A now wealthy weapons designer who made his fortune off a systematic and bloody purge of former superheroes. A seemingly endless catalogue of names marked Terminated highlights the sadistic extent of Buddy's campaign, having used his omnidroid robot to mimic the powers of its victims to create a terrifying killing machine. The Incredibles ultimately delivers a message of family unity and the importance of embracing what makes one unique, but decidedly does not skimp on the darkness either. Not one bit. Number 5. Up Only the second animated feature to receive an Academy Award for Best Picture nomination upon release in 2009, Pete Doctor's Up was universally acclaimed for the movie's stellar vocal performances and the emotional depth of its uplifting narrative. However, despite the film's central themes of hope, resilience, and dealing with loss, Up is decidedly not all sunshine and rainbows. Ironic stuff for a story featuring a bumbling wilderness explorer scout, a flightless bird named Kevin, and a talking golden retriever. The most obvious example of this contradictory status quo would be the backstory of Carl Fredrickson, with the late great Ed Asner's gruff protagonist undergoing heartbreak after heartbreak throughout the film. The devastating realization that Carl and his wife Ellie cannot have children is compounded by her premature death from illness, and Carl then slides into reclusive isolation and is relentlessly harassed by a greedy development company. Pretty harrowing material when juxtaposed with the whimsical notion of using balloons to fly an entire house to South America. Factor in the slide of Carl's childhood hero Charles Munt into murderous insanity, or young Russell's longing for connection in light of his parents' neglect, and viewers are left with a much darker story than a glance at the poster would have initially promised. Number 4. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory Based on Roald Dahl's classic novel of the same name, 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is one of the most beloved family films of all time. For anybody unfamiliar with this fantastical and whimsical tale, the notion that a movie about a renowned candy maker would feature a litany of macabre instances would be hard to fathom. However, it doesn't take long for the darkness to rear its head once the golden ticket winners enter the chocolate factory, as all of the children bar Charlie are duly punished in accordance with their character flaws. While these exaggerated punishments have their share of comic relief, the real-life notions of an obese boy being waterboarded through chocolate-filled plumbing, or a young girl being thrown down a garbage chute are unsettling to say the least. These punishments also serve to reinforce the alarming notion that Willy Wonka is a narcissistic psychopath, and they're not the only indicators. The chocolatier merrily places the competition winners in danger throughout the film, responds to most questions as though they were personal attacks on his character, and wears gaudy clothes to place himself at the forefront of everybody's attention at all times. What a menace. Factor in some downright terrifying cautionary tunes from the endlessly creepy Oompa Lumpers, and an also quite scary psychedelic boat ride, and Mel Stewart's film takes on a troubling new aura. Number 3. Home Alone and Home Alone 2 Lost in New York while Home Alone and its 1992 sequel are arguably the finest Christmas comedy offerings of all time, this is still a pair of films concerning two adult criminals attempting to murder a child and ransack his home. Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern's Harry and Marv may hardly be Bonnie and Clyde in terms of criminal notoriety, but they're still dangerous felons with a history of violence. While Macaulay Culkin's Kevin McAllister ultimately triumphs over his foes in both of his appearances, the notion of a young boy being held at gunpoint or hung on a a door hook while his captors threaten to bite his fingers off seems more suited to a horror movie than an innocent comedy. This is all without even touching upon the sheer barbarity of Kevin's iconic booby traps. In the real world, the acts of lighting people on fire with blowtorches, smashing them in the head with bricks and paint cans, or shoving nails through their feet, to name but a few, are about as dark as it gets. It speaks volumes to the quality of the comedic performances featured in both of the inimitable original installments that such violence lands 
to howls of laughter as opposed to gasps of horror. Number 2. Toy Story The Toy Story franchise has been traumatizing audiences for years. Take 1995's original as the prime example. The arrival of Eric Von Detten's Sid precipitates a terrifying slide into Jeffrey Dahmer-esque territory, with the revelation of the perverse child's pastimes. Sid destroys toys for fun, a terrifying notion in the context of a film about sentient playthings, and the depraved adolescent's room is filled with deformed mutant beings that Sid has constructed from the dismembered remains of his original toy collection. Yikes. Unsurprisingly, Woody and Buzz come face to face with this young psychopath's horrific inclinations in pretty short order after being captured. Buzz is strapped to a firework to be blown into tiny plastic shreds, to infinity and beyond if you will, while Sid sadistically burns Woody's face using a magnifying glass. It's legitimately shocking stuff, to the point that many parents likely wondered what on earth they were allowing their child to witness when the movie originally debuted. Our heroes may have ultimately escaped Sid's clutches by the film's conclusion, but the memory of his nightmarish proclivities will live forever in viewers' minds. Number 1. Shrek Where to even begin with 2001 Shrek, eh? Chronicling a grumpy ogre's quest to return peace and tranquility to his beloved swamp, DreamWorks' animated fantasy somehow managed to embrace traditional folklore, while gleefully subverting all preconceived notions concerning the former at the same time. It's wickedly brilliant that despite featuring essentially every fairy tale character in history, Shrek manages to implement so many dark instances. Whether it be Jinji being sadistically tortured by Lord Farquaad, or storybook characters being banged up in literal internment camps, there's enough grim material here to leave children a weep in. Still, Shrek's crowning jewel in this regard is undoubtedly the fate of Mother Bear. Shrek's take on this children's tale met the most morbid of ends. The family of three bears can initially be seen in cages after being rounded up by Farquaad's soldiers. However, when the displaced fairy tale creatures show up at Shrek's swamp, Mother Bear is mysteriously missing as Baby Bear weeps disconsolately. Cut to a later sequence depicting John Lithgow's diminutive villain in his chambers, and a bear rug complete with Mother Bear's signature pink bow can be seen adorning the floor. Fairy tales may traditionally be associated with innocence, but that is a preconception that dies swiftly after watching this particularly iconic offering. Grim stuff.